Barry Silverberg, Director of the Center for Nonprofit Studies at Austin Community College. Welcome to Civil Society, where we explore issues affecting our communal well being through a nonprofit lens. We're a proud partner of ACC TV. My guest today is Carl Settles, founder and executive director of E4 Youth. He believes that the creative youth, particularly those from underserved community, are a drastically underutilized resource. E4 Youth works with partners to invest cultural capital into these communities and deliver collective impact. He'll explain why and how this is done in a few minutes. A former science teacher, Carl has over 20 years of hands-on experience in educational publishing, interactive development, and advertising. He embodies the principle that great educa educators teach students, not subjects. Among other achievements, Carl is the architect of employability curriculum, which helps classroom educators build stronger relationships with students of color. His most recent venture, Austin Digital Heritage Project, trains and employs college-age youth who collect and curate oral histories into virtual archive that can be accessed via virtual and augmented reality tools. Carl is also the Vice President for Education for 100 Black Men of Austin and a distinguished graduate of our Center for Nonprofit Studies Certificate in Nonprofit Leadership and Management. Carl, you're the epitome of a visionary and entrepreneur who makes a big difference. I'm thrilled to have you on the show. Glad to and be And I'd here. like to start off with, with sometimes a difficult question, but what are you proudest of? Um, I guess I'm proudest of that I was able to stick it out. <laughs> and uh, Survival. Yeah, and die, not die on the vine, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. Um, you know, the thing that I've come to realize that my instincts were mostly correct, um, but you know the, the whole idea of being an entrepreneur um, is very easy to die on the vine. There are lots of great ideas that never really see the light of day, absolutely, uh, so to speak. Um, and you know, not that I really suffered that much more than anybody else. You know, I had my times when uh, you know I didn't have any hot water or I was sleeping on an air mattress. See, I'm always in hot water. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Not a problem. True, true. <laughs> um, I, I guess it was never that bad. Um, and I'm glad that, or maybe I'm most proud that I was able to keep perspective on things. And now things are really starting to grow uh, for the organization I started and, and for me. So at least that's my answer today. All right. It's yeah. a good answer. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about E4 Youth, and then we're going to explore you. So let's talk about E4 Youth. Sure. What does it do? Why did you create it? Well, um, my first, I actually have a music degree. Um, I went to University of Texas. Uh, my dad actually went to University of Texas for his graduate degree. He was a psychologist. Um, so he was there in the 70s when um, black folks were particularly unwelcome <laughs> at yep. the university. He was really kind of ambivalent, really, about me attending University of Texas. Um, I've always been creative, and, you know, I didn't know that you could be creative and make a living at anything other than being a musician. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of why, you know, I studied music. But my first job, I taught science and, well, I taught second grade reading and math in a Title I program. And then I taught science and history in Dove Springs in Southeast Austin for five mm -hmm. years. Um, and these kids were Title I uh, kids, so at risk. Um, they're probably, if they go to college, they're probably the first people in their family to attend college. And if I didn't know that these opportunities exist uh, for me as a creative person, how would they know? Absolutely. Um, and then, even though I did learn eventually, because I started an arts and technology after school program there, uh, that's where I started getting into programming um, and eventually discovered advertising and production and really love production. And I would have never done that. Um, and once, once, I, once, I, once I did uh, discover it, it was really difficult for me to make that transition. 
Uh, my portfolio was all education. Scary. Uh, my relationship was all uh, pretty much an education, even though I have a, a, a music background. And so I really felt like, um, how are these kids supposed to know these things? And um, yeah, I just, I just really wanted to do something. I wanted to, and E for Youth is really about creating an ecosystem where youth of color uh, in particular, uh, first of all, they can identify right. what it is that they like to do. Um, studies show that majority of students are unable to identify an interest or a hobby. Um, how can they leverage what they like to do to build an actual quality portfolio that's gonna help them with college and career, irrespective of whether it's a creative career? Um, and how do they start to develop those habits, those relationships, those skill sets um, in an organic yet structured way? And that's really ultimately what e for youth is about, is about creating, creating that ecosystem. So E4. I know stands for four E's. Yes. And yes. those are, this is a test, what are they? Hold on, let me think, no. <laughs> uh, E4 is really a process that we take kids through every year. It's engagement, education, employment, and entrepreneurship. Very good. Um, the idea, as I said earlier, is most kids can't tell you what they like or what they're interested in. Um, and frankly, our kids um, are feeling disenfranchised. Uh, in our schools sure. and a big part of what we try to address and help teachers address is that if kids you know teachers tend to cater to kids that were just like them and most teachers are kind of type A personalities um, they paint within the numbers uh, so to speak yeah. um, and so they're attracted to those kids and you know if you look at the ethnic makeup of our students which are say 60, 70 percent youth of color. Um, our teachers are 67 percent not of color. There's a, there's a divide yeah, uh, that's there. And it doesn't mean that they're not, they're not going to be able to reach those kids, but it requires that teacher to really see these students. And the students have a BS detector, and they know if you really see them or not. Sure. Oh, and when they feel like you don't really care about them, um, why should they be, even though it's to their benefit, right? right? Um, but the way that they, in their frame of reference is, why should I be jumping all this through these hoops uh, to save your job? Yep. So how, how do the kids get, because obviously one of the major problems mm -hmm. um, is accessibility, and before you have accessibility is being aware of the, the resources available, which you just spoke about. Mm -hmm. So how do these kids find out about you? Do you go out looking for them? Do they identify by schools? Um, we tend to go to teachers that are already working with the kids we want to okay. reach. So we look at the socioeconomic um, and cultural makeup of a school, and we try to find teachers there that are having some success um, and really provide them with these wraparound resources. The support. Um, you know, great programs are great programs because they've had time uh, to grow and the teachers feel like they're invested in. And a lot of times these schools that, uh, that don't have a lot of resources, uh, they're really seen by teachers as stepping stones um, to, uh, till I get a good job at a good school, uh, so to speak. And so we're really trying to identify those teachers and say, okay, um, here's some curriculum that's going to help you be able to um, uh, cultivate the strong types of relationships. Here's a trained college-age mentor that based upon what you say you want your students to do, we're going to custom match them with you. They're going to lead your enrichment club. Um, here's access to professionals, uh, creative and technology professionals that can be guest speakers, um, here's, uh, for those kids that start to really build those portfolios, here's access to industry events like South by Southwest, or the Austin Advertising Awards, and ultimately here are actual job opportunities for your students based on those portfolios that they've been building all year, where they can work for a company like gst &M and develop a campaign for Pizza Hut, or work for a company like McGarrett Jesse and develop a campaign for Lyft. And 
the students are experiencing um, success yeah. um, and they're really making a difference. It's not just a feel good type of thing. So you're, you're operating, you used your term before, in a very complicated, complex yeah. ecosystem. Yeah. You're dealing with teachers, their motivations, their needs, the schools, underutilized, underutilized, or unavailable resources, mm -hmm. et cetera. So in, in, a, in a lesson learned way, what lessons have you learned that you could share with somebody else who may not want to do exactly what you want to do, but wants to impact on the educational system? Because clearly you and E4 Youth ha are having that impact. Um, it's still a struggle. Um, there's lots of uh, uh, bureaucratic loops uh, to nonsense to hoops to jump through. Yeah, um, you know we've been in some of these schools. We've been in there six, seven, eight years. Uh, they know that we, the teachers, really want us. And every year it's like three or four months. We have to go through this process of just getting something negotiated and there's turnover at the district level and the, and the campus level. So it's really difficult, but I think for us, what I always thought about, if I can develop a relationship with a teacher, like do what you can do, right? Um, if I, when I first started e for youth uh, actually my education director, Umberto Perez, I started volunteering in his classroom. Well, Umberto worked with 100, 200 kids. And most teachers, work with that many. So oh. even if you can just assist one teacher, right? You make like you use that your, as your lab, so to speak. Um, if you can make an impact with them and lessons that you learn from there, um, then those can be taken and applied to other classrooms. So I think it's more or less uh, being methodical, you know. And even, patient. Yeah, patient, um, stubborn. As you know, I've been. I've observed that. I've, <laughs> I've been called stubborn uh, before. Um, and that was one of the nicer things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, but I think is in uh, you know I was talked earlier about having faith in what it is that you're trying to do, even though you may not know all of the the details. Um, all this, the the basic scaffolding is there. Um, and so you really have to be willing to trust yourself. Um, at the same time, you have to be open uh, to feedback. But I, I think it's about starting where you can make a difference and then seeing how you can continue to pivot that to make a bigger difference down so the line. We talked about, quote, creative youth. Mm -hmm. Okay. I spent some time as the head of the American Creativity Association, so the idea of creativity fascinates me. Mm -hmm. How would you define creativity? Well, uh, you know, one of the big things that e for youth is focuses on is the creative economy. And that was a term that was uh, coined by a guy by the name of John Hawkins mm -hmm. in the early 2000s. And I don't have the exact quote, but uh, basically saying uh, where creativity uh, result, results in a good or service that is uh, personal, more novel, more meaningful. And if you look at uh, the companies that are really driving our economy and our culture right now, um, Amazon, they took books, yep. right? And they figured out a new way to be able, novel, more personal way to do that. Um, what would, say, Google be without YouTube, yep. right? Um, so the creative class, the creative economy is, it's, it's, uh, it is STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, but it's also educators. It's, create, it's, it's uh, people that are creating creative content. It's all of them together. And I really feel like um, folks that we don't think of typically as creative are creative. Yeah. Um, and we use a very siloed approach. And that's part of the disenfranchisement for our, our youth. Um, I have a music background but I've been in technology, I've been in education, um, I've excelled um, at those things, but I never would have gotten there had somebody not allowed me to indulge my creativity. So there's that mentoring piece, mm -hmm. that supporting piece, 
um, and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, I've know. always defined creativity as cross pollination of ideas. And that's basically what, because yeah. I think too many people think of creativity as music, art, right. finger painting. You know, right. Uh, <laughs> depending upon your level of skills, yeah. uh, mine, mine revolved to the latter. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I ask you about lessons learned. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the Carl Settles of 12, 15 years ago? If you were sitting in the room and you would tell Carl Settles what he should expect, what would you say to yourself? Wow. Um, Only good questions on this show. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I think it comes back to what I was saying earlier is you're not wrong. I mean, you're wrong about lots of things, right? But the, 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 the kernel of the idea that you have what it is that you're trying to accomplish is not wrong. Keep going. Keep going. Um, and listen more, <laughs> more often. Um, I think part of this process for me is that I knew what I needed to know in order to get started. But in order to continue, I've always had to continue to build my, my own capacity, right. you know, um, Participating in the Certificate for Nonprofit Leadership um, course really helped me. Um, I've done a number of fellowships. Um, I just completed an accelerator with the Austin Impact Accelerator. Um, all of those things, all of those relationships have really helped um, fortify and sharpen me. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid uh, to have people around you that may be sharper than you, you know, iron sharpens iron. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> That's it's, a good answer. It's, it's definitely possible. Um, so you're the vice president for education of 100 black men. Mm -hmm. What is that and why is it important? Well, because I know it does relate directly to what you're doing. Sure. Um, 100 Black Men is a national organization. Um, you know, we use the, the phrase, uh, what they see is what they'll be. And what we're really focused on is, um, first of all, there haven't been a lot of avenues where black men can really have fellowship uh, with each other. Um, and also really starting to be able to speak um, with more of a unified voice about important issues uh, that are going on. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, members of 100 Black Men with the Austin school closings that are going on. Um, one of our members uh, is at the University of Texas. Texas. He's uh, in the, um, um, he runs the department, but he put out a lot of the data talking about the disproportionate effects of these school closings on, on youth of color. Um, there's this thing going on in the legislature about uh, black studies being incorporated into the curriculum. So our president and several members went and spoke directly to the, the Texas School Board um, and, and are really helping lobby and, and push, push for that. So uh, we're working with the Texas Empowerment Academy, um, which serves primarily African American youth um, and really letting them know uh, that we're, we're there and we're a resource uh, for them. So, you know, this, I'm actually coming to the end of my term. Um, I'm gonna be stepping down as the VP of Education. Um, but it's been really great uh, to be a part, uh, of the, and I'll continue to be a part of the organization, but to be an officer um, and really tried or start to speak uh, to these issues that are impacting uh, black folks um, all over this region. Uh, so it serves as, I, I know I've seen a number of postings, as role models. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot which of it. goes back to the quote you used a few minutes ago. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of it is, is about role models. Uh, it's about actively getting out in the community um, and giving a damn. Which is much, well, in some ways, is what E4? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Getting kids to realize their potential? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, ultimately, that's really what E4 Youth is about. Yeah. 
Um, there's so much talent, you know. I can walk into any uh, school um, in Austin right now, and I guarantee you that there are like at least five to ten just through the roof geniuses. And their grades may not reflect it. The way right. that they're regarded in the school may not reflect it. Yeah. Uh, but they're there. And, you know, the idea, for, particularly for uh, African-American youth, is that, you know, because of our lived experiences as black men, um, we can see them sometimes easier right. than other folks. Or where other folks may see a problem, we see an opportunity. Um, and so it's about really building, building those relationships. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very micro type of thing. One by one. One, one by one. Um, so your motto should be saving genius. Saving genius, okay. I won't charge you for it. Okay, all right. Okay. I'm a, I, duly noted. Okay, <laughs> so we're coming to the close and I wanted to mm -hmm. explore uh, with two things in particular. One, how would you describe your leadership style? My leadership style, wow. Um, hopefully my leadership style is lead by example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I hope that it's also about imp helping folks feel empowered to do things. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not in the gotcha business. You know, um, back when I was first in the classroom, um, and I think this is a thing that we reflect as educators, um, I used to raise my voice, right? Uh, and they tell you when you're teaching, like, you know, use that, that's one of the tools in your bo box, right? Is this authoritarian uh, type of thing. And I just don't do that anymore. Um, so you're much more collaborative? Much more, co hopefully, much more collaborative. I don't know what other people would say. Um, well, we've done a survey. <laughs> this, is, this is your life? <laughs> Mom, no. Um, uh, yeah, I, you know, I think it's not, I mean, ultimately, what, E4 Youth is a business, and we have to, we have to run, it, run it as such, um, but I'm not afraid to let people make some mistakes, um, and I'm not there to micromanage them. Um, I think with the students, it's not about what my dream is. It's about you and your dream. And I need to give you a little bit of space so that you can even recognize what that dream is and then I can help you refine that. So Yeah, that's so essential and so lacking in so many leaders. In, in yeah. So you've met a number of challenges, mm -hmm. as you described. You've dealt with frustration. So at the end of the day, there's some days that are good and some days that are not so good. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the not so good days? What do you do to remind yourself in terms of that you're on the right road? Um, you know, I think the idea is not to get too high or too low. Um, really just keep in perspective uh, about things. You know, there are times when I make mistakes um, and I'm not in the beat yourself up game, you know. Um, okay, you made a mistake. What can you learn uh, from that? And now let's get back to work. Um, also, being able to step away. You know, you need a certain amount of time to, uh, you know, if you're always in a hurry, you're not going to make good decisions. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes I have to force myself to slow down. Disengage? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's an old Jewish teaching story about um, somebody being given a ring, and on the ring it says, this ring is intended to remind them when things are good, that things have been bad, and vice versa. Mm. And basically it said, this too shall pass. So right. that's really a very important perspective. Yeah. You know, and uh, well, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I feel like I've gotten to know you a little better. And, Absolutely. And I'm really impressed. Oh, thank really you. Really impressed. Appreciate that. Thank you for watching Civil Society and thank you to ACC TV for producing this show. You can read more about Carl Settles and E4 Youth 
and view previous episodes at nonprofitaustin.org slash civil society. Thank you.